Hello, and welcome back to science. We are officially on page number 30 in the textbook. We're looking at scientific tools. Many different tools. You should know most of these, but it's okay. We're going to write down some other things. So in science, we use things like the metric ruler or meter stick. The difference is just how long it is. The meter stick is a meter, and the metric ruler is usually the size of a ruler. They both have both have centimeters. And measure length or width or distance. If I can spell length. Metric ruler or meter stick. There's a picture of the metric ruler right there. And here's their meter stick. They have a collapsible one. And you've seen me get our regular ones out of the closet. They go up to about my waist. This year we've already used beakers and graduated cylinders. I know I'm typing quickly. Remember, you can push pause if you need to catch up. You're also welcome, if you're a fast writer, to draw some of these pictures in your journal. You can do more than the note. You can always do more. Beaker graduated cylinder measures volume. And volume is the amount of space that something takes up. Beakers usually are not quite as tall as the graduated cylinder. So here's a picture of a graduated cylinder. The beakers you've seen in my closet, they're shorter and they're wider, usually. That measures in milliliters for the graduated cylinders and the beakers. Here's a pan balance. We've not used pan balances in fifth grade. We mainly use the triple beam balance. Pan balance or a triple beam balance. We'll add in the other one. They both measure, mm -hmm, that's right, mass, the amount of material, the amount of matter that an object has. Let me underline this. It looks nice. There's the picture of their pan balance again, and you know what our triple beam looks like. Here's a spring scale. This is one that most of us missed on that question several weeks ago. You use a spring scale to measure weight and other forces. Place the object to be measured on the hook. Read the number on the scale to find the object's weight in newtons. So here's an example of the spring scale. You may want to draw a picture of this in your book. Spring scale measures weight or force. It is measured in newtons, but we really don't really focus on newtons a lot in fifth grade. Push pause if you're done or need more time. I'm going to move on. Page number 32. Other tools that we use, stopwatches. We get them out every once in a while, but it's a lot easier for us just to use the timer on the iPad. These measure time. You know what? Why don't we go ahead and put clock with it? Stopwatches or clock. We can put those together. They're both timing devices. That's just another way. Timing device, another way of saying it is device, something, an object that measures time. Down here we have the hot plate. We just used the hot plate this a couple weeks ago when we made the water cycle precipitate on Mr. Haas's desk. A hot plate is used to create thermal energy. A Celsius thermometer. Celsius. Because we're in science, we measure everything in Celsius. The Celsius thermometer measures temperature. Here's a, now, here's an example of a beaker. This is the beaker instead of the graduated cylinder. Notice that it's more round and it's shorter than the beaker. Here's our Celsius thermometer. It looks just like some of the ones that we've used. Remember, it's got Fahrenheit on one side, but Celsius is the number we use. So right now, this is 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 degrees Celsius, and we're not worried about the Fahrenheit. A hand lens. We've used hand lenses many times, especially when we're working with soil. Hand lenses 
make objects appear larger. This is an example of refraction. Microscope makes objects appear larger. Another example of refraction. Down the bottom of the page, we use mirrors to help us observe images. Mirrors, and that is an example of reflection. And then we have also used glass or plastic prisms. These bend light, so this is another example of refraction. That's right. Let me clean up this page. Push pause if you need more time to catch up on anything. If you are ahead, then you can draw pictures on your page of anything right here so far. More tools that we use. A camera. We, we mainly use cameras on our iPads. Capture an image. Create a picture of something. Magnets. We've used magnets before. My magnets pull on objects made of iron, nickel, or cobalt. And when we say nickel, we don't mean it's a nickel as in money. We mean nickel as in a type of rock, a type of material earth coming from the earth. Aquarium and terrarium. We have these in our room, and you can see the difference in the pictures right here. Aquariums are filled with water and are for creatures that live in water. A terrarium is not filled with water. It's filled with plants, soil, and air. You may want to read through all this to find out a little bit more about the difference between an aquarium and a terrarium. Terrarium. Such as fish, because that's the aquarium. A terrarium would be a habitat for land animals, such as, hmm, how about a frog? Uh, lizard, snake, lots of different things like that. Things that don't live solely in the water. Ooh, I messed that up, didn't I? And you'll notice we have a terrarium in the back corner of the room, in the far back corner, and then the, excuse me, that's the aquarium. The terrarium is right over here by the projector computer that you walk out every day. It's the one with the snails and the other things that don't seem to be moving very quickly over there. Okay, some more tools that you might have questions about. A collecting net. We never use a collecting net. I have a couple in the closet that look just like the collecting net on your book or on your screen, but they would be used to gather insects. Great, we can go outside and collect butterflies one day. Eh, we're good. A calculator. We don't really use these in here. If we had to, we have them on the iPads. Calculators figure out math for you, right? Uh -huh. You like that definition? You can use it to figure out math. Don't tell Miss Bowers that, right? Computers can you we can use to find and collect information and a notebook. Those are two other items that you might use in science. I think we're good on computer and notebook. We don't call ours a notebook, we call ours a yes, a journal. Alright, you may push pause if you need to get caught up. And we're moving on to page number 74. If you need to move over to a new page, you can. If you can keep going, that's up to you. This is a review of physical properties. We started off the year talking about mass, the amount of material in an object, how much matter objects have. You can find out more information about mass right here. Here are the pan balances. I don't know why they don't have a picture of a graduated cylinder, excuse me, of a triple beam balance, because that's what we use in fifth grade, but you know what they are. The volume is the amount of space that an object takes up. We use the graduated cylinders to figure those out. 
and you know how to pour the liquid, the volume in, and you can measure how much it has in it. This liquid has 60 milliliters. This liquid and the rock has 68 milliliters. That means the, excuse me, not the rock, the car. So the car has a mass of, oh wait, is it mass? No. It sure would be easier if y'all were here to help me, you know? It's hard doing this on my own. No, this doesn't have mass. This has volume. The car takes up space. The car takes up 8 milliliters of space because we had 60 milliliters of volume already and now we have 68. So you subtract 68 minus 60 to get 8. This is interesting. I've never seen it like this. 25 milliliters of air was blown into the cylinder. They are pushed out 25 milliliters of water. Oh. So they filled it with water, put a cup over it, turned it over, put the straw in it. Very interesting. We may have to try that sometime. All right, moving on. That was page 74 and 75. Let's go on to page 76. Density. There's some lovely information about density. Density. They have a technical definition over here. We use it just as either an object floats or sinks. Or we can say more dense or less dense. You should know the difference between those. I'm just going to move it down to the next page so it looks nicer. Density. And we did just a little bit of density like this. You know what? I think mine's still up on that shelf over there, isn't it? I just don't have any objects in mine. So you can see that solids and liquids have different densities. Very nice. Magnetism. Some substances have the property to pull on or attract certain metals. This property is called magnetism. The ability to attract certain metals. And we know things about magnetism. We know that there are some metals that are not magnetic. Which ones are not magnetic? Aluminum. Mm -hmm. Oh, it should be a lot easier if y'all were here with me right now. Aluminum, bronze, gold. There's several of those, aren't there? Okay, well, next time you see me, you can remind me if you want to write some others down. You probably already have this because this is a review, and we already talked about this back at the beginning of the school year. Let me get rid of that comma, and we'll come on down. That's magnetism. Very nice. Next page. Nope. And the page after that? Nope. Let's go on over to number 84. 84. States of matter. There are three states of matter. Things are either in the solid, liquid, or the gas state in fifth grade. You already should know about these different molecules and how they are arranged in patterns that liquids take up the shape of the container and glasses go up and take up the height and the width of the container in all directions right there. If you need to draw these molecules, you can draw them in your journal right now. Just push pause. You should know the difference between those. Freezing and melting. The melting point of ice. The melting point of ice is zero degrees Celsius. Yes, you know that one. Each material has its own melting point. Therefore, the melting point can be used to help identify a material. The melting point and freezing point of water is zero degrees Celsius. Other liquids, Coke, Diet Coke, Sprite, tea, milk, they have freezing points, melting points also, but they may not be zero. But we know one thing for sure, water is always zero. So let's add in freezing point of water, and it is also zero degrees Celsius. Too bad you're not typing it, because you could copy and paste. If you need more time, push pause. If not, let us keep going. Boiling point. And we're still talking about the boiling point of water. 100 degrees Celsius is the boiling point of water. Now we're talking about evaporation takes place when particles leave a liquid and become a gas. Very nice. You can see the water evaporating from the clothes on the clothesline right there. Nice. Now when the gas cools down, then it turns back into condensation. So some mornings we say there's dew on the grass. Technically that would be 
condensation. It cooled down overnight, slowing down, 